were second in recruiting last year, A&M was first. A&M bought every player on their team, made a deal for name, image, and likeness. All right, we didn't buy one player. All right, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. Yeah. So it's, um, it's tough. It's despicable that a reputable head coach could come out and say this when he doesn't get his way or things don't go his way. The narcissist in him doesn't allow those things to happen, and it's ridiculous. We built him up to be the czar of football. Go dig into his past or anybody that's ever coached with him. You coach with people like Bobby Bowden and learn how to do things. You coach with other people and learn how not to do things. There's a reason people don't go, I ain't went back and worked for him with opportunities. Coach back behind don't the lights. Don't be associated with it. I haven't talked to Coach Safety. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's tried to call. Him. But they, we need to talk publicly, not privately. What you said was public. That is not a private conversation. Let's talk publicly and let everybody hear the conversation. All right, clearly a lot to unpack here. Meanwhile, former Florida head coach and Hall of Famer Steve Spurrier weighed in telling DogNation.com on Saban Fisher's War Awards, I don't know why Fisher is mad at Saban. Did Saban say something that wasn't true? Marcus, obviously you played in the SEC. You've covered the SEC for quite some time. Was Saban out of line here? Hell yeah, he was out of line. And and first, everybody knows my affinity for Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher. Uh, got a tremendous amount of respect and love for both of those gentlemen, as well as Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. So, but but for Nick Saban to come out and make a statement saying Texas A&M bought every one of their players, okay, when coincidentally they ended up with the number one recruiting class, which you've been accustomed to having for the last 15 years at the University of Alabama, this has nothing to do with jealousy or somebody wanting to be Alabama or wanting to be Nick Saban. Jimbo Fisher took it as a shot, and he should have, because what the rules allow Texas A&M to do, they use to their advantage. Now, let me explain something to the audience that's watching. Nick Saban has always been the first to the party to be able to use within the rules to create advantages, whether it be in recruiting or on the football field. That's what he's done as well as anybody else in college football, which lends itself to the tremendous amount of success that he's had. But we know what type of connotation goes along with saying a, a program bought players. All right, let's, let's, not, let's not have a conversation like we're oblivious to what that actually means and how that looks. If Nick Saban would have said Texas A&M had a collective, and and I'm not, I don't, I don't know the full definition of collective. I think it's a sum of money that you can use for NIL deals for players that you bring. Mm -hmm. If he would have explained how you can have an advantage within how the structure of college football is right now, I don't think anybody would have a problem with it. But if I say that a university bought players, what type of damn connotation y'all think that's gonna have to the public? coming from the most visible, recognizable face in college football, the guy that everybody deems as the, the guy that carries the torch for the game, like Jimbo Fisher said. And on the other end, Prime, Coach Deion Sanders at Jackson State, got Travis Hunter to come play, the number one player in the country, who plays defensive back and wide receiver, and he's going to go play with the greatest defensive back to ever play in the NFL. Why don't we mention that as being a part of the reason that he went to Jackson State, uh, HBCU? If he got a million dollars, so what? If it was within the rules and the structure of where the NIL is right now, so what? You have the same ability to do that at the University of Alabama. This was bad. And as much as it's well documented, the affinity and the love that I have for Nick Saban. It's well documented, the affinity and love that I have for Jimbo Fisher. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, I consider a mentor, somebody that I seek a lot of wisdom from when I have the opportunity to be around him. For him to call out those two specific individuals, one who he's done athletic commercials with and one who he's coached with, and I was on the team that won a national championship, where Jimbo Fisher played a hell of a role, he was the guy that was more prevalent in my recruiting. 
to come to LSU. He was a big reason that I decided to go there along with Coach Nick Saban, who's phenomenal. But this was bad by Coach Saban. And I think it was more of a ploy and a plea to his boosters to up whatever they could do within the confines and the structure of what they want to do. But this was totally tasteless. It was poor to say that they bought players. First of all, that's a whole nother lane we can go down. And the second thing is, when you come out and talk about an assistant coach who helped you get to where you are, as well as you helped him get to where he is, and then Deion Sanders, Coach Brown, who's had the type of cachet and responsibility to football in general, not to mention going back to HBCU to try to elevate the profile of that conference and, and, and put attention on those programs, it was all around bad. And I would tell Nick Saban that on a phone conversation or to his face. It was not good to say. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.